Time is on October 1st. I'm going to call to order uh, the fiscal subcommittee. Uh, it's Tuesday, October 21st, 2024. At this time, uh, we'll do a roll call. Um, Director of Finance here. Uh, Superintendent Danbrook. Here. Assistant Superintendent. Here. Uh, Director of IT and six other functions. Here. Uh, Mr. Mark. Here. Mr. White. And Mr. Gallagher. Present. Um, we'll stand now for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, yeah, forum. Fairly light agenda today, primarily focused on uh, our CFO or business manager or whatever title this city <laughs> bestows upon you. Um, first item, discussion update, 2025 financial plan, uh, Mr. Bull. Um, so I have on the screen um, and shared with the committee as well, some of my notes um, for today's meeting. There's a couple things I want to highlight before discussing an action plan for fiscal year 25. Um, I think overall, we're just trying to be more proactive in fiscal year 25 and managing things going forward as opposed to uh, like a more reactive approach and adjusting after the tax. Um, so just taking a look at, at trends, I think one of the things that we really have started to focus on and have focused on over the last year is our salary expense. Um, the past, I would say, four years, considerably uh, <laughs> over budget, with the exception of fiscal year 22, which I would call an anomaly just because we've had a funding in order to cover any shortfalls. Um, but I would think of every percentage point here is basically a million. A million to a million and a half dollars at this point. Um, so, in fiscal year 21, we we're at three three point six six percent over budget. Fiscal year 22, we were right around on budget. Um, fiscal year 23, we we're four and a quarter percent over budget. And fiscal year 20, or sorry, that was fiscal year 23. And fiscal year 24, we were five and a half percent over budget. Um, so the trend is going in the wrong direction. Um, this is this is our biggest expense for a school district. Uh, so obviously head count and people are our largest expense. And so our salary and compensation and benefits are over budget. Um, it causes disproportionate stress on um, the the more discretionary side of things. So we're way over budget on on salary and, and compensation. That means that we need to surplus or or cut funds that are going towards supplies or um, technology, basically any of the, the non-staffing expenditures that we have in the district, curriculum, uh, machinery. So one of the one of the proactive steps that we've already taken this past with this past budget were the layoffs. Um, we we eliminated 20 positions from the Wise Union uh, as well as 15 positions from the uh, the WTU. Um, we we had projections of what those savings were going to look like. I'm more focused on the, the wise union layoffs right now because we originally said we're gonna we're gonna eliminate 20 positions. That's gonna result in 1.1 million dollars in savings. Um, we've already added back 13 positions this school year. So netted out that's really only seven reductions. So originally what we were projecting is like $1.1 million in savings looks more like three or four hundred thousand dollars. Uh, 13 positions primarily IEP driven, correct? Yep. yep. Yeah, so there are there are other considerations here. It's not like we're just now hiring because the school year started and we feel like it. There are yep. other things that have to be considered, and this is I think a normal course of the year. There will be more at the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, more, so more additions or more cuts? More additions. Um, so again, just some of the savings that we would have anticipated from those those headcount 
changes or reductions, um, we're not necessarily going to realize the full amount that we were anticipating. Um, this note here is just about if we can if we can get our salary budget to be within five percent of budget, like right last year we were five and a half percent of our budget. So if this year we can just manage that down to five percent through the reductions in the WTU positions, as well as hopefully not going too far over budget with um, the wise positions that we're adding back. Uh, at that point, if we hold everything else sort of steady within the budget, so we surplus the other line items in the budget to the same extent we did last year, um, we would need to surplus about $3.3 million worth of supplies in order to break even. How, how quickly can you put together a list of like, what like what those supplies would reasonably be because then I think this committee could vote to send to full committee yep. that budget adjustment yep. and then right there we know okay guys you give this presentation or this update and say we've we've made this necessary adjustment to the budget yep. based on you brought back in 13 positions and my other question to you would be in addition to how quickly can you put that list together because yeah. if you can get it to Teresa by tomorrow if it's not a difficult task we can get a vote on it in October otherwise we're talking about it in November yeah we're, we're talking about it okay and then my other question to you would be on the um, on the total volume yeah. should we be looking at another area of the budget to reduce because I'd like to think that we're going to have just a few of more TAs added with wise because of IEPs and new screenings coming in but let's be realistic you know there's probably more coming into the district right we're probably we're probably gonna hire another five or six TAs before year's end so yep. should, you know based on that what do you think should we cut another million and a half from another area of the budget yeah so this is sort of an illustration of this kiddo so I never get to do this <laughs> all right so this is what I'm saying here. Like if we can be over budget by this like $5.4 million number in terms of salaries, um, everything else here is sort of being held constant um, from last year. So last year we were, we surplus 2.79% of benefits, 10% of services, 12% of purchase property services, et cetera. The only thing that's changed here is supplies and materials. So this is saying if everything's held constant and we surplus $3.3 million worth of supplies, we, we basically spend exactly what we budget for. So we, we would end with zero budget. Oh, like our budget would be balanced, there would be no deficit. Yep. Um, so to your point, that, that includes ESL. Uh, what, what do you mean in terms of ESL? Well, uh, this summer we. We knew we had additional salaries running through the summer months, right? Yep. As a part of FY twenty four, and then we were like, "Oh, that's not good." Oh, oh, you're talking. You're talking about just our summer payroll. Yeah, that's included here. Yeah, yeah. and so then that's included in that one twelve. This this include payments back to the trust. Is it, yep, yep. Everything that's everything that's been budgeted for is included in these numbers here. Well, that that was a post budget item, right? That agreement we made with the trust was post budget in terms of um, the drawdown and repayment. Um, so, still being discussed. So, we're not as clear 24. That's, I would not consider that an impact to the budget, though. The way that it's being structured is as a note payable. Um, so, that's, that's legitimately just a balance sheet transaction. That's like probably more accounting than everybody here wants to hear. <laughs> expenses um it's really just a transfer those are our funds so just for everybody's information there's a transaction on the table right now um that we're basically drawing down from reserve funds that we have through our self-insurance program um but we're doing it in the form of a note payable so saying we're drawing excess reserves this year and we're going to pay you back over the next two years so that we don't have to incur additional expenses um that's we're still discussing the terms of that that agreement and the term of how long it's going to take to pay it back 
Essentially, so like, we, we a loan like a 401k loan, take in from your 401k yeah. and put it back in. Rather than the benefit to it is that we don't have to draw down like our our um, unrestricted fund balance, so like prior year savings basically from surpluses. Um, but to your point earlier, Sean, this three point three million dollar number that I'm saying we have to surplus in supplies and materials. It's really it can be spread across these other accounts. We don't have to cut 3.3 million out of supplies and materials. That's just the one I'm holding constant, or I'm holding the others constant. Sorry, um, those will just be the UCOA codes that you're suggesting right. that we look at. Right. So the most discretionary spending comes out of supplies and materials, but there is also discretionary spending in in property and other purchase services and property services as well. So. Um, we have to discuss this overall plan that the administrative team and myself so lynn bill jeff and i are meeting thursday to discuss the overall plan i think we need to get more comfort around this number the 112 million that i'm projecting for salary we need to come up with like a precise figure it can't just be um we can't say 112 million now and then realize like, oh, we've hired all these additional headcount. It's actually $115 million. So now we have to cut more. So who are you waiting for that from? Nope. HR? Um, payroll's putting together, they're helping me put together a projection for, for payroll right now. So um, taking into consideration everything that we did in fiscal year 24, like the summer phase and benefits included in that. Um, so basically just projecting out from today, through the end of next summer, how much are we going to be paying out salary? Um, do you think you could have a final plan finalized by the next subcommittee meeting? That's the goal. That's the goal. So I think that there are certain plans that we can also implement before, um, but even before the next meeting, where administratively we just need to say that we need to start slowing spending because we're seeing um, uh, th there's a need to slow spending in order to avoid a deficit, basically. Um, so I think on Thursday, we're going to have a discussion of what is the overall picture look like for fiscal year 25. Um, we're going to have a better picture of it and then discuss a plan or a variety of plans that we can implement in order to slow spending to avoid a deficit for, for 25 and then present that more formally at the next school committee meeting and the all subcommittee meeting. All right. Yeah. So we have uh, our next meeting, I believe, is uh, scheduled for November the 4th. So it'll be at that time that this whole committee approves your recommendations. Yes, yeah, November 4th at 3 p.m. And so we we'll vote at that time. So it's going to be, uh, the, the, given that this is just an update, there's no vote today. Uh, but next meeting, uh, for everyone's knowledge and the public's edification, it would be a discussion action where we vote on the recommendation and obviously knowing that we're making some cuts to some areas. Yep. Um, and, and if you could, with those cuts, if you could notify the general public that might be in this meeting later on or if they attend in person, if there's any cuts specific to uh, educational quality itself. Yep, yep. I, yeah, I think one of the things that we're focused on too and as myself being a parent in the district of children who are not in the schools yet because they're too young but um student outcomes are obviously very important and so we want to do do what has the least impact on student outcomes and so that's going to be the plan that we put forward i think we all agree it's not going to be easy no matter what this hasn't been done in a number of years i don't believe here at warwick so um Whatever we do, there's going to be there's going to be tension over it, or there's going to be a discussion around it. Um, but again, what I think the goal is to minimize the effect on on students. So that'll what be the brother before. What he's saying is we're going to have a sticky subcommittee vote, and then a sticky open vote. Huh? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do you stymie the systemic yeah. issue that you have with all this stuff? Is it's, a lot of this materials and supplies that we do unnecessary because our schools are so dilapidated and they need to be, the new schools will help remedy a lot of that budget line? No, so I, I would say historically, I, so like going back to the trends that I was showing here related to salary, um, I just think that we've been, We've had this, this is the same for districts across the country right now. Like you had this influx of federal 
grant dollars over the past three years that basically subsidized your district. And we, we received like $21 million. Yeah. Um, that money was largely used to pay for math interventionists, reading specialists, like people who are going to help kids who maybe fell a little bit backward because of distance learning with, with COVID. Um, now those funds are gone, but some of the head count still exists. And so in prior years, you didn't feel the impact if you were over budget on salary because you had that subsidy of federal dollars to help you offset it. Um, but this is the first real year of having no federal dollars, but we still have some of that head count. Um, so in the next coming years, we need to really focus on the salary and compensation lines within the budget and make sure that we're putting funds there so that we don't have to annually say, all right, we have to stop spending again. We have to stop spending again. Um, it's more just coming up with a plan for, for headcount and personnel that uh, that puts us in line with the budget. It's not just we're over. Well, that goes back into my question with the reallocation of all these funds to salary. Yep. Is there opportunity in, in the next three or four years when we do get these new schools to actually cut some of that other budget that's recurring for fires at toll gate that wipe out and have contractors that we're not prepared for because the stuff is 60 years old yeah so some of the, <laughs> a lot of that is covered by insurance so we have property and liability insurance through that are like, <laughs> yeah. so just for instance when the the roof blew off the toll gate last year during a big storm the district only put in a percentage of that bill while they trust putting the remainder of it yeah same thing with the flooding in this okay. building the trust paid i think 100 percent of the replacement of the gym floor um so so a lot of that i would say is covered by insurance obviously like the more claims you have the higher your premiums are understood so that was my actually going to be my next question yeah. is does that does the new school offset and we start yep. fresh with everything yep yeah <laughs> but there's there's going to be advantages to having new schools not just for that but for other cost incentives and things like that but um insurance insurance will be less of a concern with new buildings because we will be having and does the monies that we've talked about in past meetings for special education and all those time cards and and other submittals that haven't been done yet does that offset or do you realize those dollar values against budget or does that help offset the, we, the budget at all so we budget for those and those like the, the medicaid reimbursements yeah. that we just we, <laughs> um, we took a look at like actuals to make sure that we adjusted the budget to be closer to what we've actually been receiving um, so this year's budget is reflective of what we're actually anticipating for Medicaid reimbursements. Okay. Any other questions from members of the committee? It's not that a November fiscal committee would get a, a vote coming up. Yeah. Is that 64% cut into supplies realistic? Uh, so I, I would say that it's going to get spread across other and that's that's more just an example of like this is the dollar figure that we really need to focus on on surplusing throughout the entire budget um, for illustrative purposes it just it's easier to understand if you take it out of one line uh, but it's it's gonna it's gonna come from different accounts we're not just strictly going to be taking it out of classroom supplies gotcha. or anything like that do you guys have any Thoughts? Comments, yeah, I concerns. just would agree with them that we're, we're, the actual would be out of multiple lines would just be the one targeted area. It's something we have to do. Yeah, yeah definitely not going to run deficit. How do we set ourselves up for success in the future, though? Seems like it's very reactive. I, I'll, I'll take a bit of that, and then if you guys want to take more of that, yeah. first and foremost, obviously, the new buildings will be a huge help because. We're dumping money into buildings that are a black hole by having to constantly pay for emergency situations to come up, whether remediation costs, um, the co-pays on the insurance claims. Um, that's that those are all real dollars coming out of our budget that you know we don't we we have some plan for emergency situations, but we're not sitting on you know three quarters of a million dollars, right? And so that they're there's, you know, he's, Brandon's talking about what three million right now up here with your plan. Yeah. So there's seven hundred fifty thousand that you know we would probably have spent in the last year, a year and a half on insurance claims. Um, 
that of uh, 3.3 million. So that's that's definitely one thing. Uh, the other thing is they worked very hard, the administration, on restructuring a deal with the transportation company to kind of um, you know get some funds back for failure of of service. Um, and so I'll turn it over to you guys if you have any other ideas of Just the personnel. Personnel yeah. is always tricky because. You know, you, you know what you're starting with, but during the year, we're not dealing with IEPs and more needs. So we find ourselves hiring uh, many more teacher assistants. And what we thought we needed for personnel, what we budgeted for for personnel changes. Yep. <laughs> we're we're also so we're implementing a new ERP and accounting system right now too. Um, the I, I think for the past couple of years, there's just been a lot of turnover within the business office, and so there's no. There's not a lot of historical knowledge the system we're currently using, and it was implemented 10 plus years yeah. ago. It's I remember that conversation. So um, a lot of times when we like we look at a projection in here, it's because I spent three hours this morning like putting the numbers together, making sure that they make sense, um, versus like an up-to-date ERP system with clean data in it, where it should be the clickable button. Yep. Being, like if I assume this, what is my number? Um, so I think that's going to help a whole lot planning as well. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, the, the other area is forecasting staff. We had a higher than normal concentration of staff hired in 1992. They're getting at the point where they're starting to consider retirement. So we, we will probably see a little bit of a, a, a bump there with retirements over the next few years. So forecasting a 10 step teacher down to maybe a fourth step yep. teacher. So there could be some potential for uh, having some savings there. It's just a matter of managing our, our staff and making sure we uh, hit our targets. And this is a good time to bring up, I've, I've got support on both sides of the aisle, the state house, ready to sit down with us. So what I was bothering you with last week, uh, if you could put together a list of uh, all the expenditures that are unfunded mandates, what they are and like estimated dollar value. Yeah. Um, there's people on both sides ready to talk about it. And, and Pick it up for us to possibly provide us some relief. Um, so that'd be a good way. I believe what was the number last year you showed to the city council? 40 million? Uh, well, 40 million is basically our whole non staffing budget, but I'd say, I don't know, two thirds, more than two thirds of that is probably considered an unpopular. So stuff that right, tells us we have to do like paint the buildings blue, but they're not going to give us the money to buy the paint. And yep. there's no educational value to it. And we just got to do it. Um, so, yeah, yeah, and Andrew has like a, our our legal counsel has a whole slide deck of basically all of the unfunded mandates that I puts out there. If, we would just have to assign a dollar value for war like to them. If you could do that, because they they said they were interested in a couple of them aren't war people, and they yeah. had stated that uh, they understood they're fully supportive of it because it's not only going to provide financial relief for us, but it's also going to provide financial relief for their cities as well. So uh, I'd probably invite them to uh, a, a fiscal subcommittee meeting to see the numbers. Yeah. You know, we'll send them over, but they, then you could, you know, they can hear from the horse's mouth of the challenges that the superintendent and the assistant superintendent uh, head of finance would, would be facing. Yeah. So if you could uh, pull that together and send it over to me, we'll get it out there. I'll certainly copy you guys all on emails, fiscal subcommittee members, but uh, also got local support as well here with the city council. They're ready to help and move this any direction we can. So, yeah. all right. Anything else for discussion update? Twenty twenty five financial plan. Anything? 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 All right. Uh, next item: discussion update. FY twenty five utilize uh, year to date percent utilization to budget. Um, so again, I have these figures up here. Um, under A, these are these are the total expenses that we've actually paid out yeah. over the total budget. So for fiscal year 25, we're at about 14%. At the same time last year, we were at about 13%. Um, so not materially different than last year. Um, if you account for the increase in the overall budget, we're probably about the same spot. Um, for expenses plus encumbrances, so this is going to take what we've already paid and add in any encumbered expenses that we have yet to pay. Uh, we're at about 28.3 percent this year, 25. Same time last year, we were at 26.5 percent. So again, it's 
it's not a material increase that year over year that could just be an effect of people putting in purchase orders earlier or processing purchase orders earlier in the year. Um, Non-staff expenses. I thought this one was sort of important to highlight what we've spent so far this year because this is the area that we're looking at potentially slower spending. Um, so, so far this year, we've spent $6.3 million out of the $40.1 million we budgeted, which is 15.4%. Um, the same time last year, we were at 11.6%. So again, spending at a faster rate um, over last year, but it's not it's not a material amount yet. It's twenty seven percent higher. What's that? It's about twenty seven percent higher. What do you mean by that? Twenty seven percent. Like higher. the four was a four. Well, never mind. I did my math wrong. The, yeah, if you look, I wouldn't look at like category to category. So A, B, and C are all like different measures. No, I was looking at just the bottom expense, the four percent difference. If you take that actual number, that four percent out of fifteen is about twenty three, twenty four percent. Yeah, that's true. Yes, yeah. So we're in, in terms of percentage, I guess yeah, we are spending at a faster clip. But I think some of that is just like our our purchasing process and our purchasing team is processing things faster. Um, I don't think it's anything other than that. Be interesting to see what this looks like with the new ERP system where it actually goes through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or comments for percent utilization to budget? Yeah. Oh. All right. Next item, uh, discussion update. Uh, I asked Brandon to speak to this. Um, he made some changes um, on emergency authorization uh, for everyone's knowledge. If the superintendent needs um, to spend money in between school committee meetings, they require school committee authorization. Uh, by virtue of our policies, uh, the chair is able to provide emergency authorization. It doesn't mean that it foregoes a full school committee approval. It would just make its way to the next meeting and it will go onto the docket. But it'd be something like, um, you know, when Lynn wanted to break me in as chair, she called me an hour later and there was the flood here at Gordon in the gym <laughs> and there was the need to call in single source and do $60,000 worth of water removal and uh drying out the facility so uh, that would be at 10 o'clock at night and she needs approval um so that would be an example so uh brandon came up with a plan to make sure that just people aren't going around the director of finance or the superintendent uh, to formalize it so if you would just like to speak to the new yeah system. it's really just to streamline communications um related to emergency approvals because um we have found sometimes like just through word of mouth, somebody might say like, oh, this happened at this school, I just need you to get approval from Sean. Um, but at times, like I might not find out about it, so I don't necessarily know about the cost impact or how much work it has to pay versus the trust. So basically just saying that anytime there is an emergency, um, the budget manager has to, has to email myself and the superintendent. Um, we'll discuss it internally in all likelihood we're going to approve it but um just to make sure that we're both included on every communication going forward that's really it and this is um this was shared district-wide and it will be added to the business office's uh, procedures folder on the website too so that do you think we should just have a line included on there like examples of district emergencies to include but not limited to just so you have a little bit of a, uh, yeah. of a wiggle room there just because uh i feel like those categories capture it all but god forbid there's something that's not there and you know lynn calls me up and berating me and i say sorry when you the ball and go on yeah. four bullets i think i think <coughs> we're trying to cover that but just mention anything that's okay other circumstances considered for emergency treatment if there's merit to the request uh, that's sort of the catch all. All right, good exclude everything. Cool. Anybody have any questions, comments, concerns on this item? Thoughts? Okay. And the last item is discussion update spending freeze consideration. So we've heard uh, kind of a draft financial plan, and then we know that this committee will have the final plan put before us uh, on November the 4th. 
uh, for us to vote and then pass on to a uh, full school committee. So I don't know if, if we should uh, start to just prepare for a vote in November, uh, but uh, based on your plan, like should there be periods here within the fiscal calendar where we're putting on uh, a spending freeze? Should we have certain categories where we're stipulating like there's, you know, you know, whether it be a hiring freeze unless otherwise stipulated by an IEP, um, you know, things of that nature. Should we be starting to have these conversations because, you're, you know, your plan has us modifying the budget by, what was it, 3.3 million? Well, it's, going to be, it's going to be a different number than that because it's also assuming that we're surplusing funds in the other lines yeah. compared to last year. So, yeah, yeah five and a half million, I would say. Yeah, so now we've got to find another five and a half in the budget yep. to balance it all out. And um, what I would hate to do is we balance that budget out, but then we go and have these, you know, un unbudgeted requests. Like maybe they, they got, you know, the budget owners realize there's a from hard no here unless there's a direct impact on the student yep. uh, or, you know, the curriculum or a compliance obligation. Um, so, Anybody have any thoughts on like spending freeze considerations based on the first bullet point of uh, today's meeting? I think I think Thursday we're going to hash out like the larger like overview um, and then start to dig into the details a little bit in terms of where we're going to be looking for the funds. Oh, we're going to consider all alternatives. Uh, to your point, it's not it's not just going to be one line item. We're cutting five and a half million dollars out of this. Um, we'll we'll consider everything. And in the past, we've given um, allocations. So you might say you can use 20% of your supply budget, use 10% of this. So you're not taking it all, you know. So we can look at that. Yeah, sort of phasing and spending yeah. as opposed to just saying, like, we're not spending anymore. Yeah, and even though both kind of accomplish the same thing, historically, when we had many years ago um, instituted freezes, it prompted some tough behaviors the following year that budget managers would try to beat the perceived freeze. And so it's the it's it's almost and they did, they would get kind of you know wise to it. Yeah. And we don't want to necessarily do that and go back, but the same result <clears throat> a phase of limitation is superintendent set of um allocations. Yeah. Same end goal, but it's, it's uh we did spend heavy in the first yeah month or two of the <laughs> Um, How do budget managers receive their budget? Is it a yearly budget or do they just receive monthly? Yeah, so when we go through the budget process and it gets approved in, in May and June, um, I think the final one was actually not approved till July this year with the state aid coming in later. But once that gets finalized, the business office loads the budget into the accounting system. And then Is there a way to break that up? In terms of like buying a monthly? Um, almost like a like a budget checkbook. Some of it's tough because like we could have a curriculum program that would run for the full year, so you can't pay like one twelfth of it or one tenth of it or something like that. If you notice that in a lot of your technology subscriptions, yeah. so I need to up things in June for July one, and I have to pay the full amount. Same yeah. curriculums, also school supplies. You know, the first day of school started with supplies is heavier than. You might see in October and November. Yeah. <laughs> Some items can be parceled out easily, like monthly installments for things that we need to yeah, build. Those tech, those tech supplies and those tech subscriptions and stuff, weren't we talking about making those the hard costs that are already preset in the budget anyway? Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, those are kind of set it, forget yeah. it, regardless. Yeah, exactly. So, even a freeze doesn't, you know, you can't not renew Microsoft because yeah. you got a freeze. So, yeah. So, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, there's like discretionary spending and then there's true discretionary spending where we actually can do something about it. Where's the biggest opportunity for the savings? There's there's a couple of different, um, I, I would say overall, just supplies in general, like we've been saying, um, there are some other larger projects that are going on. We did budget for capital improvements within the district this year. <laughs> Like we're we're redoing the track at that right now, so that's obviously not money we're going to recoup now. Um, but there are some other larger larger accounts that we can pull from. Is that and is that 
something that could theoretically be depreciative over the course of the next couple of years because you're doing it in preparation of the new schools? No, no, because we're a public organization. Like we don't have, sorry about my computer. Um, the, well, I guess my yeah. point is, is, <laughs> it's not depreciative is probably the bad word, uh, bad word, but like not real, not include that in a budget expenditure for this year for next year because we're doing it with the premise that it's the place to be while we don't have a home field for program or open yeah i see what you're saying it's, it's the cost the, the cost of the budget in the year that the construction is done which is this year yeah okay. so there's no there's no way for us to fund that expense now there are other expenses that we budgeted for where we could say Let's not start it until June of 2025, because then we can push it into next year if uh, the project isn't complete until the next budget year. Understood. Um, but for stuff like the track, that's already that's done. It's all or almost done, and it was yeah, it's not quite done. <laughs> They're getting there. They paint the, the lines this week. I think it's this week. Yeah, I see them out there every morning. I, yeah. I'm on the morning shuttle run with the kids. <laughs> Anyone else on uh, discussion of possible uh, spending freeze or comments, thoughts, concerns? Uh, we're on a public comment. Individual comments will be respectfully limited to three minutes per person. Public comment not to exceed 45 minutes. But the content of comments will not be restricted. It's all good. It's committee, it's citizens, committee members. And the administration alike will be respectful of each other's right to speak, tolerant of different points of view, and mindful of everyone's time. We didn't need a police detail today, which was good. <laughs> so, any members of the public wishing to content uh, comment? I'm not going to say it three times because it just no one here. So, <laughs> for the public's record, there's nobody here other than members of this committee. Uh, so, with that stated, next meeting is scheduled for Monday, November fourth. 2024 3 p.m. It's not on the Tuesday because the following day is election day. Um, so Monday, November 4th, 2024, 3 p.m. We know that um, there will be a vote by this committee to pass the financial plan onto the full committee and possible um, vote on spending freeze considerations, uh, passing that on to vote for the uh, full committee. Um, being that there's no other uh, business before this committee, I'd be looking for a motion to adjourn. So made by Dr. Taylor. Seconded by Mr. Bold. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.